Uh, and something that we've really talked about as a team uh, uh, over the last couple of years is really pointing people back to Jesus. And so I love that there's just a real sense of, um, you know, Jesus-centered and focused worship. Uh, one of the, you know, I think one of the most powerful songs on the record is a song called Jesus Over Everything, um, which is Andrew and Ben. Charles. And Charles. Um, maybe just talk about that song for a minute. Yeah. That song, honestly, is, is a bit of a journey because Charles had given me a prophetic word probably three and a half years ago about writing a song from Philippians 2. And he would, kept bugging me about it. He was like, have you written that song yet? And I said, no, I haven't. And finally, I was like, well, just write it with me. And so we got together with Ben and we started it one day. And I remember the day we started the song, we wrote it over probably four times together. It was a long time. But the first day we started, we came to team night. It was a Monday, we came to team night and you were talking about the mandate of our house. And it's just Jesus over everything. And we all looked at each other like, okay, this is special, obviously. And, and then we kept working on it. And then I remember we, it originally had a bridge that was, it went, be exalted and thrown upon our praises exalted, like a very vertical bridge. And that's what we all thought it needed. And then Ben sent us a voice memo of what the bridge is now. Like the beginning, it was like, over fear, over shame. And me and Charles both said no. Which now is obviously the best part of the whole song. I, Man. I trust and then, you, Ben, I trust and you. Then a, couple, like, a couple months later, I just felt the Holy Spirit rebuke me. And I had to repent and say, that is supposed to be the bridge. Wow. I remember texting you guys and going like, no, I actually think this is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And so we got back together and like wrote that bridge. Yeah. Wow. And maybe you could talk a little bit about that. But I think it's a test. This song is a yeah. testament of like really digging in. Because yeah. we knew it was special, but we knew that it wasn't yeah. just going to be a day in the room together. They got it finished. We actually needed to yeah. dig in and make sure it was yeah. right. And so, yeah. yeah, and it's, it's so easy with songs sometimes to be like, yeah, this is good, you know, and but it, yeah, with this one, it just definitely felt with the title of Jesus or everything, it just needed to be what it needed to be and to take the time to sort of hone that in. And I think, um, I remember when Charles even just brought this sort of idea of Jesus or everything, like the title, just sitting, you know, just working it out. And, you know, you can't just sort of, these songs have to come from somewhere. They don't just sort of come out of nowhere, you know. And, you know, we just didn't sit down. It's, it comes from sort of, a longing, a, a hard cry, and we all have our journeys. And, and you know, I, we've we've been journeying as a church, but also my family, you know, and just uh, our son was. Um, I'm gonna get <laughs> choked up. Um, he was diagnosed with autism, and uh, so songs like this, you know, it's hard to kind of sometimes sing, but it just felt like it needed to come out, you know, and so. And I mean, a lot of songs have come from that place, but this one too, just singing that bridge. Just whatever happens to life, he reigns on the throne. And that's what it's all about. So <laughs> I'm grateful to be part of it. Yeah, so that's where it came from. And this is where... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kleenex, anybody? Um, you know, this... this the importance of the prophetic declaration. I think it's easy to think, man, this team's singing these songs because they're on the other side of it, but we're most often singing on this side, um, believing for what's on the other side. And it, it doesn't mean they're empty words. Actually, the, the power of realizing the place that we have of authority and the foundation that we get to sing and worship from. Actually, we talk about this all the time in our church, how our praise precedes the miracle. Our praise has got to, it's always going to come um, before we see the miraculous and doesn't just come before, but it's the, the preceding, the planting of the seed in the ground of faith for that. And, you know, I love, I mean, we can testify even in this, this room just of the way we've probably all been able to sing into circumstance and worship through circumstance before we've seen the miracle and the breakthrough. And sometimes the miracle and the breakthrough doesn't always come the way that we want it to or hope that it will, but every time it will lead us closer to Jesus. And uh, I, you know, I, I love, I mean, I think it's one of the reasons why there's so much power in that song, because this is not somebody else's journey. This is your worship. You know, when John chapter 12, when Mary um, breaks into that room and 
pours out her fragrance on the feet of Jesus. She didn't care who else was around. She didn't care who was watching. She didn't even care that it was really an inappropriate time for her to bring that worship. She just knew she'd had an experience with, with Jesus that nothing else mattered. And so she came and poured out a real worship and the fragrance of that worship changed the atmosphere of the room. And I think so much of what even we get to experience as a church is because you guys and our whole team worship from that place of, man, I might be in the midst of this battle, yeah. but I'm gonna allow the, the reality, I'm never gonna allow the, the reality of my circumstance to overwhelm the reality of my worship, but I'm gonna allow the worship to dictate and become the fragrance of what pours out of my life. Yeah. So, man, it's, it's wild. It's, you know, and I, I, I mean, I honor all of you guys, even just hearing that, you know, for you, Andrew, to be like, that's, that's not the bridge. And God's like, it is. It is the bridge. <laughs> and it, honestly, it takes, yeah. it takes humility um, yeah. and an understanding, I think, of just how to steward yeah, um, the gift, understanding that this actually isn't ours. You know, right. I mean, me and I and Andrew and Hope have talked about this, you know, peace be still. Didn't start out called Peace Be Still. It was called Galilee. Yeah, and it I was thought a, it was going to be huge, but it probably <laughs> wouldn't have been. <laughs> and it was a really great song. Yeah, but it would have got lost. And there was something. Lost. Yeah, and there was just something in my spirit of like, actually, I don't think that's exactly where it needs to be. And I, I could have held back, going, you know, this is Mia, you know, yeah, Mia you Donovan, Mia Fields, it. who's like yeah. one of the all-time best <laughs> songwriters in the whole world. You know, like she knows what she's doing, and yet in that, the humility to say. I think you might be right, you know, and I think there's there's mm -hmm. that sense in our team of like, we we want to steward this the best yeah. that we can be. We also uh, even even the 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 gift of writing, we we want to hold in a place where we're saying this is not ours, this is yours, God. These are your songs. You do with them what you want. You move through us as your vessels to to bring those. And so you know, I think it's it is just a testament to you know really the maturity of of you guys, you know, our, our team uh, as a whole. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. So it's amazing. I'm excited for this record. Lots of songs. I, I keep saying we're going to do a shorter record. But <laughs> we, I feel like we tried. We, we tried. <laughs> we did try. <laughs>